guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's LT, and today, I think, if everything goes right, is the day that we're finally gonna get our 408 Stroker Windsor installed underneath the hood of our 1993 Ford F-150 single cab, short bed, off-road truck project. Now, it doesn't really look that off-roady right now, and all that's gonna come probably later on this winter. But if you've watched the last couple uploads I've done on this truck, you'll remember that the big issue that we had that kind of stopped progress for a little while was finding a correct flex plate that'll made up this internally balanced 408 Stroker Windsor to this E4OD transmission. Now, I, I tried to find the best solution possible. I really, really wanted to run an SFI certified flex plate on this thing. But unfortunately, I just have not found one that is going to mate up between this internally balanced Windsor and the E4OD. And everything I read points to the fact that these E4ODs, they have different spacing than the traditional, you know, C4, C6s and some of the older Ford transmissions, um, even uh, the AODs and the 4R70Ws and stuff like that. Um, Ford changed a lot of different spacings and things like that in their transmission, and I just can't find um, a lot of you guys suggested different flex plates, but still I haven't found one that will work for what I want. So the next best thing that we're going to do is this guy right here, which is, I showed it to you last time, it's a Ford 300 straight six flex plate. Now this is from a same year F-150, you know, early 90s that also would have had a straight six and the E4OD transmission. And the great thing about the 300 straight six is it's internally balanced. And as you can see, it has the same exact crankshaft pattern as the Windsor, except it doesn't have the counterweight, which means it's perfect for this application. I just wish it was SFI certified, but that's okay that it's not because this is a temporary solution. And a couple of you guys kind of picked up on that in the comments. Um, the long-term goal that the owner has for this truck is a later, a little bit later on this winter, when we do the axles and stuff like that, we're actually going to be swapping to a different transmission. We're not just rebuilding the E4OD. We're actually going to be swapping. He wants to use either like one of those new eight or a 10 speed automatic, like you get in one of the brand new F-150s. I think there's a company out there, US Shift, I believe it is, who has a conversion package that they're putting together. It's almost ready or it might be ready now for all I know. But that's what the goal is for this truck. And when we do that conversion, it'll come with its own flex plate and bell housing adapter and all that stuff. So you guys who are worried about the stock E4OD not holding up, don't worry, it's just a temporary transmission to get the truck on the road. He wants to drive it just for a little bit with a little bit more horsepower, and then we'll tear it apart. Probably it'll be late this winter. Um, and then we'll do the axles, the transmission, and everything else that's gonna convert this truck from just a stock looking truck to a off-road, pre-runner style, kind of Raptor-esque build. Anyhow, so I have the 300 straight six flywheel, it's bolted on, thread locker on the bolts. I have the stock separator or spacer plate behind there. It's all cleaned up, the headers are on, and this engine is ready to go into the truck. So, enough yapping, let's get to it.
I am super excited right now. It's actually the next morning, but the 408 Stroker Windsor is officially and permanently installed under the hood of our 93 F-150 pre-runner off-road slash whatever project that you want to call it. Uh, the motor went in fairly simply. It's a like-for-like like swap. I mean, the 408 is externally, you know, in terms of the block and things like that, the same as the 351 that came out. So everything, for the most part, is going to bolt right up. Uh, the motor mounts are from Bronco Graveyard. I'm not sure if you can see them way down there. Um, they actually went in really nicely, and because they have that urethane uh, bushing in the middle, it makes it really simple to get things lined up because you have the stud that kind of sticks out at an angle, but you can just kind of pivot the motor mount so the stud points straight down and it helps it just kind of drop in. And then you just got to not forget to tighten up that main bolt once you're done. Uh, a couple of quick notes about installing really any engine to any automatic transmission, and that's just kind of be very careful because if you do something incorrectly, you actually could cause pretty significant damage to your transmission. Um, first, first note, before I get to that, I just wanted to point out that this engine in this F-150 is set back like really, really far and my cherry picker almost couldn't get to it. Um, so if you look just kind of the relationship between the front bumper and the wheel, uh, most vehicles, the engine sits, you know, somewhere around the front wheel or a little bit further forward. But if you follow the center line of the axle up, the engine in this one is basically entirely behind the center line, which is great for weight distribution, but when it comes to installing the engine with a cherry picker, it does take a little bit of extra reach. I had it on the front hole, which was perfect for balance and that let the engine sit as far back as possible. And then finally, I had the cherry picker all the way out here on its longest extension. And then uh, normally you're supposed to have the chain running like through the slot. I actually ran it out the front for that last like two extra inches of room. And even so, the, uh, the little jack spot right there was actually hitting the front bumper and my engine and transmission were about an inch and a half to two inches away. So it took quite a bit of force for me just to kind of push it back that last little bit. So um, back to the transmission torque converter clearance issue. Um, they say you're not supposed to use bolts to suck the two together, the engine to the transmission. But a lot of times you kind of have to do that because maybe the dowel pins are just a little bit, it's a, it's a pretty precise fit so sometimes the dowel pins might just not want to fall into place you know you've got to line up the snout on the torque converter with the crankshaft and then on the forward you got to make sure you have the torque converter studs lined up with the holes in the flex plate so there's a lot of up and down back and forth just to make sure everything is kind of lined up but on this one even when i had everything lined up it wouldn't just push right in and that was partly due to the fact that my engine crane was like hitting the front of the bumper and the engine couldn't get pushed back that easily so i did have to use the bolts to draw the two together now the only downside to doing that is you really have no idea how much pressure it's taking to draw the two in now you can kind of feel based on how much torque you're going to put on the wrench um, but this is kind of a roundabout way of saying make sure that that converter is seated in because if it's not and you just crank down on the bolts you will cause damage to the transmission potentially the pump is going to crack and you could even uh, actually break off an ear or mounting bolt on the bell housing of the transmission so one trick that i always do to make sure that nothing is jammed up where it shouldn't be uh, is just kind of hop underneath and take your fingers on the torque converter reach through the access hole grab a stud whatever you can do and just kind of wiggle it back and forth. If you have a GM transmission, you ought to be able to take a finger, just kind of spin the converter around very freely. With the Ford, you can't spin it because the studs will be through the bolt holes in the flex plate, but you have enough clearance there just to kind of wiggle it back and forth. And as long as you can move it with just a finger or two without any significant effort, you have a pretty good indication that nothing is jammed up and nothing is gonna crack. So just tighten the bolts, make sure it's even, kind of go back and forth, top to bottom and so on. Um, and then once you have everything tightened down fully, give the converter one last double check to make sure that it's loose and then you know you're good to go. You know that nothing is going to be jammed up. Um, once you do that, I threw the, once I did that, I threw the nuts on the torque converter, tightened that down, spun it over, uh, motor mounts are in and tightened up. And basically, this is a permanent installation now and we can move on to some of the other stuff. Uh, I do have to order a few parts for the fuel system. I kind of wanted to make sure I got the engine in place first. Um, my plan is to use the stock fuel lines to deliver fuel from the tank. And these use that like Ford quick connect spring style clamp. And I need to get an adapter to run from there to like a dash 6A. And I've got them just kind of plugged off now. 
I'll have to get a regulator that sits somewhere up in here, maybe. I'll just kind of figure out what the best spot for that is. Uh, we'll get the super sniper mounted, then the ignition. We've got all the ignition parts. It's just a matter of finding a home for the CDI box, which I've got a pretty good spot on the fender here, maybe on the sidewall, who knows. Uh, and then the ignition coil. Uh, again, I'll, I'll find locations for all that stuff. The next few things I'll have to do are just get a couple of brackets cleaned up from the old engine. We're going to be reusing, you know, the alternator mount, the power steering bracket with the AC pump on top. For the most part, it's going to be stock 93 F-150 accessories on the front here. So I'll just get them cleaned up and, you know, we have new water pump, new idlers and tensioners, new alternator, obviously. Um, I think for now I'm just going to be reusing the stock power steering pump. And the reason for that is just because whenever we do our solid axle swap, we're probably going to be doing a hydro boost conversion at the same time um, and a different steering box that's tapped for hydraulic assist. So we'll probably tackle the entire steering system at a later date. Uh, we'll see how this stops the vacuum brakes. I don't know how big the camshaft is in this engine or how much manifold vacuum is going to produce compared to this one. So anyway, uh, I know we're kind of just rambling at this point, but I'm just, I'm really excited guys. And I appreciate you watching all the way to the end. Uh, just a quick final note before we go here, you might've noticed the last video I did was a sponsored post. It's a infomercial, I'll just come out and say it. I mean, there's no way around it. Um, but that's just part of the territory when it comes to being a YouTuber. I mean, this, this is my job, guys. I don't have a day job that I go to to make any outside income. Everything I do here on the channel is how I support myself and my family. So occasionally, I, I promise it's not gonna be all the time, but occasionally I will do these sponsored posts. And also just, it's, it's not gonna be products that I think are garbage. Most of the stuff that I'm gonna review is something that I think is helpful or useful or something that you know is worth, is worth your while. So I know the content isn't necessarily the most enjoyable, but I do appreciate you guys watching it because it helps the channel grow, it helps the algorithm and all that good stuff. And hopefully this channel will grow to a point very soon where I actually don't need to do that stuff. I'm, I got a goal of 100,000 subs by the end of this year, 2021. We're halfway there in terms of months and time. Um, so we've got that goal to meet. And anyway, that's just a quick thing I wanted to say. That's part of me being a YouTuber. And I do appreciate your guys' support for everything. The merch, uh, the, the subscriptions, the comments, the likes, and all that good stuff. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to be doing on the next video, whether we're going to be back on the F-150 or on the ugly truck, the Turbo 8.1. I've got the two-step in and I've got some different changes I'm going to be making to the exhaust as well. So we got some good content coming, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.